Hello everyone. This is the first part on our list of tutorial videos on the use of the electromagnetic solver for metal forming applications. This tutorial assumes that you are already familiar with the LS Dyna keyword format and solid mechanic solver in general, but that you have never used the EM solver yet. So in this part what we're going to do is that we're going to do a quick overview of the basic EM or electromagnetic keywords which are needed in order to run a simple EM problem. So first of all, a little bit of uh, information on the exec table which you are going to need to use. So since we are, um, since the EM solver is required, uh, the EM solver is available on double precision exec tables only. All right, so make sure that you have a double precision version, LS Dyna version first. Um, then you can use either SMP or MPP. However, it is uh, strongly recommended that you use MPP, especially when you got big jobs. The reason is that the EM part will not scale on the SMP exec table. Um, the other important point is that uh, the EM solver uses dynamic memory handling, which means that uh, the static memory which you allocate when you do a LS Dyna job by doing memory equals uh, 50M or 100M uh, will not allocate memory for the EM part. The EM part automatically looks for the memory that's on the computer and allocates just the right amount. Um, and then th before we start, there are three important links which I want to introduce. Um, the first one is the Dyna examples website because the example which we're going to see next uh, is available on the input deck is available on that page. So make sure to check that example and to download uh, the corresponding input deck. Uh, next we have, uh, um, if you want to have access to some more documentation and most uh, more specifically if you want to take a look at the theory manual um, then I highly recommend that you follow this link here on the LSTC website, the documentation page where you will find um, papers that have been published at conferences and uh, said theory manual. And then finally, um, for the whole length of uh, this tutorial, I suggest that you keep nearby uh, the keyword manual, uh, volume 3, where all those EM solver um, keywords are documented, so you can uh, take a look um, at the different keywords and what the purpose is in more details. So, um, from the website we have downloaded this very simple input deck, a very simple mesh there, uh, which is basically just a rod uh, with two segment sets, segment set 1 and segment set 2. And the objective of this uh, input deck will be to impose a scalar potential difference, or voltage basically, uh, between the two outlets of this rod, between the two segment sets. Um, and so the shape of this um, voltage, of this scalar potential difference, uh, will be defined by the load curve contained in voltage.k file. This is what you see on the right there. So in order to do that, we will introduce four EM keywords. The first one we will call EM control. And what it does, it basically uh, turns the electromagnetic solver on. And for us, uh, for our metal forming applications, we will need to turn on the eddy current solver, um, which is the solver type 1. So for the moment, we'll, we'll explain later what, uh, what eddy currents uh, do exactly, but for the moment, let's just put that first flag to 1. The second keyword is the EM control time step keyword. So if you look at the manual there, the keyword manual, this keyword has got several options. In our case, we're going to define it as a constant electromagnetic time step and set the value to 1 to the power minus 5. Next, we will introduce um, the material keyword. Basically, in order for the EM solver to run, uh, it needs to know what is the electromagnetic conductivity of your uh, conductor. Uh, in our case here that's the rod uh, and the user here has defined a conductivity of 1 to the power minus 4 and here if you um, if you look at what's on the slide there's a um, warning an important warning here uh, which is that the material ID which you give to the electromagnetic uh, um, keyword uh, refers to the ID which you have given to the your uh, material so here em mat 1 refers to star mat one. Okay, so uh, another important point here is uh, for those of you who are not familiar with electromagnetic quantities, uh, the formula here, the equation which you see, is how you can relate 
uh, with the uh, conductor's resistance. Uh, electric conductivity is equal to the length of your conductor, this L here, divided by the resistance multiplied by the surface area. Finally, the last keyword which we're going to introduce uh, is the EM circuit keyword. So the circuit is defined by its ID, that's the first flag there, and its type. In our case, uh, we want to impose the voltage by a load curve, which is contained in this voltage.k file. So again, if you read the keyword manual, you will see it's a type 2 uh, associated with load curve number 10, which is the ID, ID in voltage.k. So for each circuit, um, you have to give an inlet and an outlet, segment set ID, basically our plus and minus sign. So in our case, uh, if you look at the mesh, those, those are going to be ID number 1 and ID number 2. And then lastly, I want to draw your attention there on uh, the first flag of the second line of EM circuit, where you also need to specify a segment set ID. What is this segment set? Well, basically, um, it says you have to give uh, a segment set through which the, the entirety of the current will pass, will flow through. Okay, uh, so usually it is um, usually people pick the outlet segment set ID. That's perfectly fine in cases uh, where the mesh uh, is rather simple, such as this one. We're going to see in another video another case where it might be more convenient to put it some some place else. Uh, but for the moment, it is enough to just put it uh, the same ID as the outlet segment set ID. Uh, it's not mandatory in every case. When in our case here, where we impose the voltage, it's not mandatory. Um, but it's still recommended to put it in because uh, it will give us some output uh, quantities, which is always useful. Now again, if I show you um, the input deck where to find it, uh, you can find it on the Dyna example uh, website. Um, it's the example which is called Basic Eddy Current Problem Setup, and here you have the download section um, where you can download this .zip file, uh, where you will find the various um, input decks .k files. There's four of them: uh, structure.k, voltage.k, mesh.k, and then i.k. If you look at the mesh.k file. Uh, if you open it in LS Prepost, for example, you will see um, that it's our simple rod there and our two segment sets, one and two, which have been defined on the two uh, outlets. Then, uh, if you open the voltage.k file, for example, the input deck, uh, you will see that's our load curve number 10, okay, which is going to be assigned to our circuit. Uh, then if you open the structure.k file, you see that uh, it's a very simple uh, input deck with an imposed time step and a rigid material, okay, uh, which is constrained, fully constrained here. You see that's the second line of the mat rigid. Next, if you open the i.k, uh, this is our main file always, uh, and this is the, it includes all the others, and then you see here below, uh, you see our electromagnetic uh, keywords. An important remark which I'd like to make um, is that um, whenever you are setting up an electromagnetic problem is to first make sure that the solid mechanic problem runs independently with no error termination. In other words, that your uh, setup is clean and correct before um, even putting in uh, your first EM keywords. The reason being is that, well, uh, if you add those EM keywords and the solid mechanics uh, problem already doesn't work, then um, it might get a bit confusing uh, for you to track down what is going on and what's wrong. So always uh, check that the problem runs uh, without any EM keywords before putting any in. So uh, here we have our four EM keywords. So again, we have our EM control, which we saw earlier, which turns on the eddy current solver. Uh, then we have our EM uh, time step definition. So uh, we have two time steps now, one for solid mechanics and one for electromagnetics. And uh, we make sure that our electromagnetics time step is at least as high as the uh, solid mechanics time step. Okay? This is often the case. We will see this uh, in our next video. Um, since the EM solver is implicit and the solid mechanics solver runs in explicit, so uh, the EM solver time step is usually uh, always um, higher than the mechanical time step. Nonetheless, pay attention to that. Uh, and then we have our material keyword where we have defined our electromagnetic conductivity as a property uh, of the material, of the rigid material. And then we have defined uh, uh, our circuit and we have associated uh, the load curve number 10 with an imposed voltage uh, between the, out the two outlets between the plus and minus uh, of our rod. If you open this file, 
uh, yeah, then with LS prepost, um, the D3 plot, sorry, uh, you will see here in the MS post uh, GUI, you will see that we have our solid, our rod, on which you can uh, display electromagnetic quantities, for example, the scalar potential here. So you see that we do have a gradient between our plus and minus sign. We have uh, successfully imposed our voltage. Uh, and then other things which you can notice, you can also display the current density and this we'll see in more details um, in our next video but already we can observe something interesting uh, is that the current is not uniform across the thickness uh, of the rod okay it diffuses through the thickness with higher values uh, at the surface and lower values uh, at the bottom uh, at the center sorry uh, it's even clearer if you display well here I'm, I'm displaying streamlines but uh, that's not so clear but if you look at section planes for example and display their current density you definitely see that it's higher on the surface than through the thickness okay this is a fundamental and basic property of the eddy currents and this is uh, what we need for metal forming but we'll describe this in more details in the next video and then another remark again which uh, we're going to talk about more in the next video is that by default we have our solid part, our solid group, but the solver has also created uh, this MS shell here, which is basically the skin of our solid. So the purpose of this MS shell we're going to talk about also uh, in our next video. And then finally, one last thing that you can take a look at, you can also here in this menu open um, the EM circuit file which gives you information uh, on your circuit which you have created. For example, it gives me the voltage between plus and minus signs. It gives me the current that's flowing through plus and minus. Okay, And it also gives me, for example, the circuit resistance, which in this case is a constant. So, uh, as a summary of what we have seen, so far. Um, the first uh, important point is that before doing any electromagnetics you need to define and set up the corresponding solid mechanic problem. Next uh, we need only four EM keywords in order to turn on uh, the EM solver. Uh, the EM material property which needs to be defined is called the electric conductivity and this is up to the user to find uh, what, this what this value is. Uh, we have now two independent time steps, okay, uh, one for the solid and one for electromagnetics. Uh, the electromagnetic time step must be at least as high as the solid mechanics time step. Okay. Uh, however, one um, other criteria which we have uh, briefly mentioned in the, in the introduction is that uh, the EM's time step must be small enough um, so that important phenomena such as a rapid rising voltage is captured. Okay? Uh, in the introduction we have said that we wanted at least 50 EM time steps. Okay? So this also uh, drove our choice uh, of the EM time step. And then finally, uh, one thing that we saw when we looked at the D3 plots uh, is that a consequence of the, uh, the current solver, which we have chosen, um, seems to be that the current is not uniform across the thickness uh, of the conductor. Rather, it seems to diffuse uh, with higher values closer to the surface. And so this uh, we'll talk about um, in more details in the next part, which will explain more the physics that are behind this and the consequences on the mesh uh, and the time step. Right. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.